in a recent trimming video, we had trimmed a bunch of different perennials and such in our landscape, and you had more questions. You wanted to see more plants being trimmed. So today, I'm out in the garden, and we're going to be trimming some various shrubs. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings, and we're going to start off with the coral berry, also known as the proud berry bush. This bush blooms off of the new growth. So any shrub that blooms off of the new growth will set its flowers in the season that that new growth occurs. So next spring, when this coral berry starts to put on its new foliage, that is the same time that it's going to put on its new flowers that will result in berries. So fall is a fine time to trim your coral berries. So the typical rule of thumb with trimming shrubs is trimming them by a third. Now, this plant here, you can see all the berries are brown right now, so it's not looking very nice. Some of these in my yard at home are still looking really nice. The berries are beautiful. Those I would leave through the winter and then trim those in the spring. But because this one, all the berries have turned brown, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the trimming on it right now this fall. So trimming it by a third. What I'm gonna do is I am going to just come in here and kind of eyeball what a third is. This plant is just a little taller than three foot tall. So trimming about a foot off of it would be a third. So let me go in and start trimming. I am using a pruners to trim my plants. Another thing you could use would be a hedge trimmer. Um, sometimes that goes a little bit quicker, but sometimes you don't have as much control either over where you're trimming. So as you can see, when I trimmed this, I really wasn't like, oh, where to go in there, where to trim. I'm just looking for about 12 inches and trimming below that 12 inch mark. We've got a few little wispy ones on the side. So I'm just gonna kind of grab those in my hand and kind of give it a big cut. This too is another um, situation where like a scissors might work good because the scissors has a longer you know, trimming edge on it. So find your tool of choice. I kind of go between a pruner and a trimmer. Depends on, or a pruner and a scissors, depending on what I have most handy. All right. So we trimmed a third off of that plant, kind of shaped it up a little bit, bulked it up. Now next spring, realistically, this plant will be fuller because every time I do a trim, it's gonna create more branching. And the more branching, the fuller a plant is, the more berries it's gonna reward us with next season. Another shrub people had wondered about were spirea. So spirea is a shrub that blooms off of the new growth, the new season's growth. So it can be trimmed in the fall or in the spring before the foliage and flowers start to emerge. Now here we have the candy corn spirea in our garden and you can see we've got three of them planted here and they all look pretty good. So typically if the plant is looking pretty good, I don't do any trimming on it. Now, what would be a case where you would want to trim your spirea? Let's say your spirea is way taller than what you were wanting it to get for its location. Or let's say it's just kind of misshapen and not looking great. Those would all be instances of where you may want to trim your spirea back. So again, I don't need to trim our spirea. They're still pretty small. They have nice shape. They're looking good. But if I were going to trim our spirea, I would again go along that general rule of thumb of trimming it back by one third. So if this plant was big and I needed to do trimming, um, I would take it about here, which is about the third of the height. This is about 24 inches tall or so. So I would take about eight or so inches off of this plant, just trimming it in this area. That is how I would recommend trimming your spirea. But again, if your plant is looking good, they don't always need to be trimmed. Sometimes it's just a matter of the plant is getting old and needs to have a trim back to keep it looking good. And in other cases, like I mentioned, it might just have a wiry or weird shape going on where you wanna just trim a little bit of it off and that can be done as well. So butterfly bush, that's always kind of a controversial one. And the reason is, is because if you live in the North, like what we do here, we're in zone 6A, a lot of times our butterfly bush will act like a perennial. And what I mean by that, I mean that the new growth is gonna come basically from the base of the plant and that will be our 
new season's growth next year. But for those of you that are in a little bit warmer climate, a lot of times your butterfly bush, the new growth is gonna come off of the old twigs. So what do you do? Well, there's two ways of doing it. For those of you who live in the south, you can just leave your butterfly bush the way it is um, if you want to, or you go with that trim it by a third model, trimming just a third of the plant off. Or you can trim it down to the base. It just really depends on how you want it to look next year. Now me personally being here in Michigan, usually what we would recommend for people is that they wait until the spring to trim their butterfly bush. See where that new growth is coming from. If the new growth is coming from the base, you trim off all of the dead woody stuff on top. If the new growth is coming off of these old extent, ex, um, existing stems, well then you could just leave it the way it is and let it continue to grow. But there's another thing. With butterfly bush, sometimes if you just let them grow off of the existing growth, they can get kind of large and maybe bigger than what you're wanting in your area. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now for me here in Michigan, I'm going to tell you, wait until the spring to trim your butterfly bush. See where that new growth is coming from. But for me, because remember, my best time to trim is in the fall because that's when I have time to do it. I'm gonna actually go in and I'm going to trim this back. I'm not gonna wait till next spring to find out where the new growth is coming from. I know that I personally like the looks of my butterfly bush better if I trim them down near the ground. They just have a nicer, fuller habit where if I leave the old sticks, they just, sometimes I feel like they look a little ratty looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back to the ground. And by to the ground, I'm gonna trim it about six or eight inches off of the ground uh, for, to see what it does for next year. So controversial, absolutely. Um, but it just, it really depends on what look you like best. Now, butterfly bush are hardy down to zone five. So if you're a zone 5A, just leave the top on until the spring. Let it be some insulation. Um, but I know in my garden, I can trim them back this time of year, and they come back just fine for me. So let's go ahead and take a look. So actually, before I go and do my trim, for those of you who want to be a little conservative and want to just do the trim by a third, this is what I would do, is I'd take about 10 inches or so off. This is a Pugster butterfly bush. And I'd, I'd trim it back by about a third. But because I like the looks better of the plant coming up from the base when it's fuller, I'm going to trim it back in here. And you can actually see this little snip here, that's where it was trimmed last year. So I'm gonna kinda go with where it was trimmed last year to do this year's trimming as well. Now sometimes if you have a warm fall, you might find that your shrubs or perennials may start to put on some more growth. It will go dormant and it will go to sleep once winter kicks in. All right, so I took it down to about 10 inches or so. So we will watch next spring where the new growth comes from. And because we've had a very weird fall this year, look at this. It had already started to put on some new growth this fall. Now this is going to die once, you know, once we get hit by winter. Um, but plants are doing a very funny thing this year because of our extremely warm temperatures. So if we would continue to stay warm for another month or two, this growth here would fill out and would start to get nice and full. But because I know that we have frost coming in the evenings, these will all start to go dormant. Itea, also known as sweet spire, blooms off of the old growth. So the best time to do any trimming on your Itea is after it has done flowering. Flowering usually happens somewhere around May or June here in West Michigan. So you can see we did not get out here and get this plant trimmed as we should. So what can we do in this situation? It's got these spent blooms on it. Um, I, I can't trim too much because if I do, I'm going to sacrifice next season's flowers. So in this situation, what I would do is I would have to do some very selective pruning. Just pruning out these flowers. Now this is going to take a long time to do. And had I done this earlier in the season, I could have just went through and just trimmed about six inches off the whole top of this plant to remove all of these spent blooms. But because I didn't, and I don't want to sacrifice that growth for next year, 
I have to go in and be a little bit more selective and trimming out all of these blooms. So that is where it is important to know about your shrubs when they bloom, if they're a new growth bloomer or an old growth bloomer, uh, to know when it is best to get out and do the pruning on your plants. We're gonna leave this for the gardeners. They'll have a little bit more time to get out here and prune them all off. Um, but as you can see, just below those flowers is where I was getting in to get these plants pruned up. Here we have the Hepticodium, the beautiful seven sunflower. And you can see all these beautiful bracts right now. This plant actually is not in bloom. Um, when it was blooming, it had really pretty white flowers. And the red, which almost looks like a show of flowers, are the bracts that remain. This is such a cool plant. It has so many seasons of interest, from its beautiful white flowers to its magenta red bracts. And then in the winter, it's got really nice foliage that gets kind of peely. So what I'm doing with this particular plant is I'm training it into tree form. So last year I did a pruning video on it. It was probably about half the size, maybe only three foot tall. Now it's about six foot tall. And I, I was training it into a tree form. So I want it to have definitive stems because I want you to be able to see that beautiful peeling bark on this plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my my stems down here and look for the major stems. So on this plant, there are three, three major stems here, here, and here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim some of these lower branches off. Nice, nice sharp pruners here. Let's see here. You just kind of get in there and you look. You look and see what can get trimmed out. And how, how much trimming do you want to do? So, let's see here. I'm going to see if my pruners will trim. This is a pretty thick branch. It's probably about a half to three quarter inch. So let's see if I can get through it. That was a pretty hefty branch I took off. I'm going to take this one off as well. Getting there nice and close. There. So what I'm doing is I'm revealing more of the stem. That way next year we'll be able to see even more of this peely bark. Let's see, we're going to go ahead and remove this one here as well. There we go. I'm going to take off some of these little ones while they're still little. There we go. Now, where I'm up, it almost seems like there's like five definitive branches or, or stems on this tree. So that's more than what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy here. Snip. Ooh, what do I want to do? Do I want to leave it as four? Or... Boy, don't want to make it three. I think for now, I am going to leave it as four main branches. And the reason why is I want to see next year where the weight, where the heaviness is coming. Right now, I feel like this is the branch I should trim off, but because this does seem like it's a stronger, more dominant branch. But I want to see next year how it looks because this back one has a lot of branching as we get higher up. This one not as much. You know, let me let me take a look at it from another angle. I might change my mind. And that's the thing too, when you're pruning plants, look at it from all angles because you might get just a different idea from one side or the other. I'm going to kind of pull it off to the side and just kind of vision what's going on. Man. I think I'm going to leave it because I think if I get rid of it, it's going to make the, sh the, the, the tree not seem very nicely shaped. So for now, I'm going to leave it. I can always remove it later if I want. Um, and I can remove some of the lower branches on it, which I'm going to do that. Get rid of some of these lower branches. That way... 
I can see how I feel about it next season. Obviously, if you trim something, you can't put it back. So you want to be selective of what you're doing and making sure that it makes sense. So this is the trimming of the Hepticodium for this year. And this is just revealing more of that stem to really show off that nice peeling bark for our winter interest. If you have any questions or comments on any of the shrub pruning that you've seen today, please leave a message in the comments below. We are always looking to help you or help answer any questions you may have. So if there are any questions you have on any of the shrubs in your garden, when to trim, how to trim, let us know and we'll get them answered for you. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.